What's up YouTube? Today we're coming to you from the Moto Mike 805 garage and I got that sun like right in my eyes. <laughs> um, I had went to uh, on a ride yesterday to Santa Maria to Clawson, uh Harley Davidson and Honda and what other ever brands they sell at that uh, motorsports store there in Santa Maria and when I got home to edit the footage there was no audio coming from the helmet it was the onboard mic so something happened i don't know if it wasn't plugged in the mic wasn't plugged in all the way so it was just a bunch of motorcycle engine and wind noise so today we're going to record and we're recording from the garage um but before we get going make sure you hit that subscribe button make sure you hit that uh thumbs up <laughs> comment and share and we'll get going right after this Alright, so this is the third time uh, me attempting to record this. Uh, I sat here and was almost done recording the video in my garage. I realized I had the washer and the dryer going, and that would probably be really annoying in the background. Um, so anyways, uh, I was talking about uh, my week so far, and uh, or I get to say Sunday. Today's the start of a new week. Uh, but last week on Monday, I get up in the morning and uh, my cat or dog, someone goes running by me while I'm going down the stairs in the dark at five in the morning and I end up tripping and like literally sliding halfway down the stairs into the, there's a little shoe rack thing at the bottom. Twisted like both my ankles. I'm wobbling around all week. I still got one ankle that's kind of sore and kind of wobbling around. Uh, but anyway, so after that happens, I get on my, get on the, the fire blade ride to work and I'm going to blame me wobbling around. Uh, the sand and the dirt in the in my work parking lot. <laughs> I go to get off the bike and I kind of lose my footing for a second, but I kind of grab the bike and up oh, oh, save myself. I didn't fall down, but then the next thing I know, the bike's going over and uh, tried to grab onto it. I posted kind of a funny short video of the the bike falling. Um, <clears throat> so that was my Monday. Uh, I was trying to get the stuff to to fix the bike that broke on it. Uh, main thing that broke was bar and mirror and throttle tube that took the worst of it the bar and mirror folded in smashed the throttle tube cracked it was kind of sticking i got it to where it wasn't sticking um but i uh ordered new throttle tube uh the new throttle tube came with new grips on it so i went ahead and put those on no more no more sticking a uh, throttle um also i hated the bar and mirrors i i do not like them i had been wanting to put it's kind of the OEM style mirrors back on. Um, you see these, they got the, you know, the running lights and the turn signals built into them. And I can tell you from riding the bike now, you can see behind you so much better than you could out of those bar mirrors. For one, you got to look down. It was kind of taking your eyes off the road in front of you to see out those and you could barely see out of them anyways. So these new, um, they're bike master. They're o they're replace OEM replacements, but they're not really OEM. The OEM ones, uh, I believe, at least on another Fireblade I saw, they bend back. But there's really no reason to bend them back. I've seen some comments about lane splitting, but if I can lane split on this thing and not hit cars, these mirrors are no problem. And really, I don't think they stick out that much further than the bar and mirrors. Maybe another inch. Uh, so maybe more, another two inches of, of width for the, the whole bike. <clears throat> Another thing that happened was we got a small scratch right here. If you can see there, I got some touch-up paint. I'm going to wet sand it after it's completely dried for a few days and then maybe apply another coat and then wet sand and polish it again. <clears throat> it wasn't too bad. It was just some little scrapes. It looks worse now because it's got the touch-up paint over it. Um, and then same here. There was a couple little scratches on the exhaust. And the same thing, I put some touch-up paint on that. I'm not sure how... I don't know if the touch-up paint I put on there was heat resistant. I did ride over 100 miles yesterday, and the um, uh, it's, the touch of paint seems to have stayed on okay. Um, down here, it doesn't get hot right there, but it probably does get hot right there where that touch of paint is. So, <clears throat> other than that, the plastics were okay. No damage to any of the plastics, thank goodness. Um, see, just the main thing is the little scratches that happened right there busting the throttle tube and the bar mirror which has already been replaced um and then i just sped up the process of me getting those um <clears throat> mirrors back on which was something wanting to do anyways 
Um, another thing uh, we did over the weekend, uh, Colby, so we got Colby's Grom here. Um, he, we've been wanting to get rid of this really ugly fender that comes on the Grom. <clears throat> Now, if you're familiar with Honda, I think a lot of their sport bikes have this kind of the same, let me move this chair out of the way. A lot of Hondas have this the same kind of fender design. I believe even the Fireblade had one that looked just like this, but I've already got the fender eliminator was done to the Honda when I bought it. So I ordered the fender eliminator kit. It was only like 38 bucks from TS Industries. And then I came out and looked at it and I was like, oh, wait a minute, well, if we remove the fender, we're gonna lose the turn signals. And I, I don't think we'll be street legal then. I, maybe you can ride as long as you use hand signals. But I, this is going to be Colby's bike, so I'd like it to be as safe as possible and you know keep him from getting pulled over on it. So, so like I said, that was 38 bucks, and I thought, oh, that's super cheap. We'll get the fender eliminator. It'll be something fun for us to do. Um, but then I was like, no, we gotta we gotta figure out the tail light solution or the the turn signal solution. So what we did from TS Industries is they've got a OEM replacement tail light, <clears throat> LED light that has the turn signals kind of built in. So it's a brake light, running light, and turn signals. It kind of goes like this on, on one side when you're turning. Looks pretty cool. So I had to order that. Now that and the relay was 150 bucks. So <laughs> a cheap little, oh, what's something kind of inexpensive Colby and I can do to his bike uh, turned into being a little bit, a little bit more expensive. So now we're like around 200 bucks for for doing the fender eliminator. Uh, another thing Colby wanted to do is he hated the look of the stock exhaust. So uh, we ended up looking online. Um, I think this is a Kinemoto exhaust. I don't know if that's how you say it or if I'm, that was even the one. It's not a, oh, what was some of the other ones? There are some other exhausts that you can buy for this bike. They're like six, 700 bucks, but we're not putting a six, $700 exhaust system on a $3,000 bike. So this thing was, uh, I think it was like 90, 95 shipped. It was from Amazon. But it had like over 15,000 reviews with like 4.5 out of 5 stars. So um, we went ahead and we put this on. And uh, I had Colby do everything himself. Really easy. It was those two uh, nuts right there. There was a couple bolts where the, the uh, catalytic converter was at. And then that one bolt there. So sounds sounds pretty good. Let's, we'll uh, fire it up here. I don't know how well it will sound uh, listening to it on video. But... It sounds better than the stock exhaust. Uh, Colby was really happy with it. Let's see here. So Colby was really happy. He, th he thought it looked really good. It sounded good. If you wanted it to be louder, that baffle right there does come out. You see right there's a, the little bolt that comes out, and you can slide the baffle out. But I think I, I think it sounds kind of good um, the way it is. Here is the uh, here's the stock exhaust system. So you got your pipe coming off your there the the uh, catalytic converter. There's the muffler. This actually weighs quite a bit. It's a uh, kind of a heavy a heavy system that they comes on here stock so we did drop uh quite a few pounds by removing that this thing is really light um so like i said he really enjoyed it um we'll probably put a uh um what do you call it power commander on it to kind of help adjust for it breathing a little better although i've read online and they say just doing the exhaust um doesn't change it a whole lot the bike can kind of account for itself, which I, I don't see and I'm sure it has an O2 sensor somewhere. It's not on the pipe like a normal bike would be. Maybe, maybe that's the O2 sensor. That's probably the O2 sensor right there. Um, so we'll see how it, how it runs. We're, it's probably not gonna get ridden a whole lot um, besides maybe me going a quarter mile to work and back. Um, but that is something that we will uh, we'll look at doing. Uh, other than that, I haven't done much to any of the other bikes. Um, still got Jolene here. And uh, I did give her a bath the other day. And then Colby also, Colby washed the Grom. I did follow some tips that I got from um, other YouTubers about uh, complaining about the water spots and drying the bikes. So look what I picked up. A leaf blower. A mini leaf blower. And it does great. It helped them blow the water off. 
uh, Colby was out washing his bike and used it to uh, to uh, help dry his bike off when he got done. So Colby's get, getting to be excited, looking forward to turning 15 and a half when he can get his permit. Doing the research yesterday, it looks like if you're under 21, you got to take the uh, motorcycle safety course before you can get your permit. So that's something we're going to have to get on as soon as uh, he's of age and able to. Uh, oh, another thing Colby and I did, <clears throat> I taught him how to uh, clean and lube the chain. So first I had him clean and lube the chain on his bike. And then for a little extra practice, I had him do the fire blade too. So Colby got a, a little experience with uh, doing a little bit of bike maintenance. He's helped me with uh, quite a few other types of, uh, uh, I don't want to say maintenance, maybe maintenance and some upgrade items because he's been the one recording the videos. So I usually kind of walk him through the steps on everything I'm doing. Um, anyways, I think that is, uh, I think that's all for today. Uh, sorry we're not out on a ride coming at you from the uh, Moto Mike 805 garage. I don't know if I've ever given you a tour of my garage. We'll give you the, the nickel tour. Um, so starting over here, we got my toolboxes. Um, these are what I have left uh, from my days of being a mechanic. Uh, right out of high school for about three years, I went through the ASEP program uh, for General Motors and I was working for a couple years on cars and the place I worked for uh, sold and then the other place, the bottom, closed the shop down because they were a competing, uh, a competing entity. And then our owners opened up a another dealership, and they only brought a couple mechanics over to start with. And I was one of the low man, low man on the totem pole. So this is a little bit of what I got left over. I sold my. Uh, it was funny when I was working on cars. I sold. I had a huge Mac toolbox, and I no, I sold it or I traded it for a mini truck, uh, Mitsubishi. Um, what, do you, what were those? The mini, mi, Mitsubishi mini trucks? But I needed something to drive. I didn't have a car. I worked uh, right down the street from my shop so I could just walk to work. But this is what I got left over. I got a couple Craftsman toolboxes. Um, you know, torque wrenches and whatnot over there. Um, uh, miscellaneous stuff. Got some spare parts. There's a fender for the Sportster I wanted to paint. I was going to do yellow, but not sure now if I want the bike all yellow. Uh, what do we got? Some tie downs whatnot cleaning products oil oh a bunch of miscellaneous stuff over there we got my helmets back there um electronic stuff or the ham radio stuff see when we fit the bikes in here just fine yeah not a very exciting tour <laughs> there this one's full of harley parts that box and on top of that box that's all spare harley parts mostly for the sportster and uh, there's an old antique radio behind the oil pan there. Our new water heater. I don't know if I told you a while back when the water heater busted. It was leaking everywhere. So that is the quick tour of the Moto Mike 805 garage where all the magic happens. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm going to get out of here. I say sorry again. This wasn't on the bike. Uh, hopefully we get back to one uh, next Wednesday as long as when I'm recording, um, I can hear myself. Now on the... I. After I stop recording, I, I uh, change batteries out. Oops. I change batteries out on the camera for the ride back because even if I'm not recording for a vlog, I always keep the camera rolling just in case there's an accident. So you got some, some footage or some evidence of whatever happened. And on the way back, I was kind of mumbling to myself here and there, and it worked fine. So I'm guessing that it was just a little USB C that goes from the adapter into the GoPro. I wasn't seated correctly. Or there's another problem. Um, I used to always start the GoPro by just hitting the uh, record button, and that used to work fine. Then all of a sudden there was, uh, I don't know, it, it even happened on my old camera. Um, neither one now, if you on my cameras, if I start the GoPro by hitting the record button, and that means if it's powered off, I just hit record, It will, the external mic that's plugged in doesn't work. It records from the um, uh, onboard mic. And that's happened to both my seven and my eight started doing that. So I have to power on the camera first, then hit record. So I don't know if any of you do that on yours or if you just <clears throat> hit the record button, but that's what happened. Um, and I think because I did it so often, every once in a while, I think I, I accidentally start the camera that way without powering it on first. All right, well, this has been uh, long enough. It looks like we're already almost 15 minutes. I wasn't planning on making it that long, so since we're just sitting in my messy garage, 
uh, have them around, loved one. <laughs> All right, YouTube. Well, uh, make sure uh, hit that subscribe button, uh, hit that thumbs up, comment and share, and uh, remember, ride like everyone's a hired assassin trying to kill you. Stay safe out there, YouTube. Peace.